Moving on to the first session of the day, we have a keynote session. Our speaker is the founder and CEO of Media Speaks Global, the new social network for media, marketing, tech and regulation. She is the former CEO of Universal Macan or Magna Global Budapest and co-author of the Advertising Space, a handbook of effective media planning and buying in Hungarian. After her agency era, she started her boutique media consulting as a media strategic consultant and independent market expert that founded a cross-media business intelligence service, White Report. They work with companies like Bartelsmann, Google, the National Media Authority. She founded Media Space Global in January 2020 with the mission to connect media, marketing, tech and regulatory professionals globally and invites every ambitious professionals to join and share knowledge and expertise to find new opportunities in our truly global B2B marketplace. She is a regular speaker at international professional events, conferences, their analysis is quoted by the UK competition markets and authority. Please welcome on screen Kinga Ingza, founder, White Report and Media Space Global. Hello everyone, my name is Kinga Ingza, I'm the founder and CEO of Mediaspace.global, the new independent social network for professionals in media, marketing, technology and regulation. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, conference today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, share our knowledge and expertise with you. Actually, I'm not an educated um, speaker on creativity uh, because I'm not a creative uh, person in the sense, in the traditional sense, because um, I come from uh, the media agency side. I'm the former CEO and um, media director of Universal Macan Magna Global Budapest. Uh, then I started my boutique media consulting um, and our UK company a few years ago and uh, operating the cross-media business and intelligence innovation. We found uh, some other problems that we would like to solve with media space, namely that it's time to share knowledge and expertise uh, on a global scale uh, among media marketing, technology, uh, innovator, regulator, uh, professionals. So that's why I'm very happy to uh, speak here today uh, because uh, I would address this um, business creativity uh, or innovation that also have um, the whole industry, the individuals and also companies and organizations thrive in these difficult times. So let me share my presentation with you. Okay, so... Uh, what I would like to speak today is, uh, as I mentioned, not the traditional thinking about creativity, but creativity in business, uh, in the media and advertising space. I've got three topics uh, to discuss, a short introduction about ourselves, um, a few general thoughts about creativity in business, and last but not least, uh, business creativity and innovation in the media and advertising space in the 2020s. So as a short introduction, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I have a media agency, media consulting and uh, business intelligence analyst background. Um, how we got to the media space, I will tell you uh, later. But currently what I would like to speak about is why um, we created mediaspace.global and why we believe that uh, professional knowledge sharing uh, discussions like this conference um, and any kind of um, collaboration is key in these days. So mediaspace.global is uh, the only vertical business to business social platform for the media industry. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, we started our, our career as a um, media agency and business analysts. And uh, coming from uh, this angle uh, in 2019, uh, November, so it was right before the pandemic, uh, we had a very interesting roundtable conversation that we organized in Paris at the GovTech Summit. Um, where we invited a diverse group of professionals like the Global Advertising Director of the New York Times, 
competition lawyers from Brussels, London, media lawyers from all around Europe. Uh, we presented new business insights about uh, the unfair competition in the traditional media compared to the online platform uh, world that impacts uh, lots of uh, business and, uh, and regulatory issues. And um, why I'm mentioning this is because basically that's when uh, we first met uh, this need that high-level professionals, decision makers, basically live in their professional bubbles and uh, they normally don't talk to each other. And uh, after this conference, uh, I just came to the conclusion that because we have global problems, we should just have more conversations, knowledge sharing uh, globally in the digital space. Uh, so I think that's why I'm very happy to, to present here uh, where we come from and uh, what our attitude and, um, and basic approach uh, to creativity is. Basically, this was uh, the starting point in uh, January 2020 uh, when we decided to launch Media Space. And uh, this was basically before the pandemic, uh, but obviously the pandemic just made uh, these challenges even bigger because we believe that it's time to reshape how we connect, how we make business, and how we collaborate to solve complex industry problems. Because I think it's pretty obvious, uh, sometimes people forget that we had a lots of challenges on industry and business levels, even before the pandemic. So the pandemic has just accelerated them. Uh, what we believe is that we are all connected. We are all in the digital space. And it was true uh, before uh, the pandemic as well, uh, because simply everyone who is in the advertising and media business is connected to the internet. Uh, but there was a the old school way or I don't know traditional way uh, of uh, communicating uh, learning sharing knowledge is that we did it physically in physical spaces conference conferences events and so on and uh, this is what uh, however the pandemic brought a lot of challenges uh, we believe provides a huge opportunity uh, because we are all connected and we should use uh, this for example, this conference uh, that I'm just speaking at uh, is something that anyone uh, from all around the world uh, can watch and uh, listen and react and so on. So I think it's just the beginning of something more powerful that we as an industry as, and, and as businesses uh, can benefit from. So just a few words about uh, our platform and obviously I don't want to... Uh, tell too much about the details, but uh, basically the main principles, what we believe is, is very important these days uh, and why it connects uh, with creativity. So as I mentioned, we uh, first recognized this information and um, professional bubble uh, challenge uh, like two years ago, uh, because it was a problem even before the pandemic. And uh, we just thought, and I think it's even a bigger problem and opportunity that we should, we should just break them. So simply sharing knowledge uh, shouldn't be limited to, to physical spaces. Uh, it should be global. And obviously the way for that is uh, the digital space. So as I mentioned, I would like to uh, share a few thoughts, uh, which are not mine, but I uh, fully agree with them. So I just picked a few things. Uh, one of them is that uh, many people say that business creativity is underrated. Uh, if you look at how much <clears throat> articles and studies uh, are about the general creativity, uh, branding creativity, and so on, uh, it's just amazing. And obviously that's very, very important. But on the other hand, I believe uh, there should be more uh, words and discussion about creativity in business. Uh, because obviously, and especially these days where the, or when the limited uh, resources uh, make us even more demanding uh, for creativity, this is our best interest to take advantage of our own creativity. Uh, and that might mean individual creativity 
or uh, creativity comes from collaborations, brainstormings, uh, working together. Uh, and obviously that's true for uh, organizational and industry level problems as well. Um, as someone wrote, there is much more to creativity than uh, artistic value. Um, I'd like to quote this because I think this is very well uh, said. Uh, that creativity in business is a way of thinking that inspires challenges and helps people to find innovative solutions and create opportunities out of the problems. Uh, I think that's a very, very important point uh, because when we speak about creativity, that's something huge and something that has never existed before, um, which is basically not true because uh, the most important day-to-day -day problems uh, can be solved in creative ways, and they might be even more helpful sometimes than big ideas and big theories and um, and so on. So that's why I, I agree with the statement that uh, creativity or business creativity is underrated these days. Um, on the other hand, it's quite obvious that there are uh, explicit creative solutions uh, when companies can say that, wow, we did it and it's absolutely fabulous. No one found out such a promotional activity so far and so on. Uh, but to be honest, I believe that most of business creativity comes from those insights and details, uh, which can come from only those who have the capability of understanding them. And obviously skills and knowledge is one thing, the other, and opportunities, how we create solutions uh, out of them, because sometimes uh, we, we, we come from that data uh, space. So just to give you an example, um, when we look at uh, our database, sometimes our research director says something completely different what I see from the data. And I think this is fabulous because uh, we inspire our, each other and we can say that, okay, this is all in there, uh, then what's next? So then comes another creative thinking process uh, regarding how we create strategies out of the data and the insights, which we uh, have quite enough, but it's very important to, to create meaningful insights out of those uh, details. And that's already a kind of creativity because otherwise everyone should think in the same way and a research director should see exactly the same patterns what I see in a database, but 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 we are now, uh, we are not. Sorry. So I think this is very important uh, that uh, we go for those so-called little underrated creative solutions um, in business and in the in the day-to-day -day work uh, that can create a huge business impacts on on everyone's life. I would also like to quote this because uh, it's very close to, to what we experience in person. Uh, this is a research that was done in 2015 and 2020 uh, about what are the top uh, 10 skills uh, in the workplace. And uh, what last year uh, this research found was that complex problem solving, critical thinking and creativity. Uh, are the three key uh, skills that required or valued the most. Um, to be honest, for me, because I'm not, a, as I mentioned, an educated um, um, theoretical you know, thinker about uh, creativity, complex problem solving is a kind of creativity and critical thinking is a kind of uh, creativity because it means that someone has a different view and can articulate and willing to articulate uh, the different view. So uh, somehow they are uh, probably all related. And uh, these are those uh, kind of skills that we require the most, but in the day-to-day -day work, I, I don't believe that, that uh, they thrive or there is a chance for everyone to, to to use this kind of capability if she or he has at least one of them. Uh, but obviously the workplace uh, challenges are a different one. 
We can't uh, have a presentation, obviously, without the impact of the pandemic. And um, this is a, a Forbes article that I'm quoting now, uh, which says that having a creative mindset uh, towards your business or your company for which you work may, may, may uh, make the difference between success and failure in these times. I also fully agree with these um, uh, statements as well, uh, because this is coming from that process that I uh, started to uh, describe uh, on this example uh, with our database and uh, with our discussions uh, with our research directors. So uh, once she sees something uh, that I don't, and for example, we decide on a strategy to use this or that insight uh, to have a client, for example, uh, then obviously that can impact uh, the business of that, that company or brand. Um, and these are those kind of decisions, which are very intuitive decisions uh, in many cases, because we didn't have such experience yet for such a huge disruption. Uh, we haven't been in such a stressful situation. Uh, life wasn't so complex. It was complex before the pandemic as well. Uh, but I think it's, it's even more challenging uh, to work and uh, make business decisions every day. So I think the, the responsibility for uh, making a good business decision out of everything that you analyze and, um, and try to understand about your market, about your consumers, uh, is, is very, very difficult to, to decide on which is the, the right route. So um, that's one thing. Uh, on the others, uh, other, other thing or other side, um, what uh, this article's author uh, points out is that uh, practical people, business owners can survive easier uh, in these days uh, with out of the box thinking uh, and perhaps even discover ways to grow. Uh, so I would like to uh, stick to this a little bit uh, because I think it's, it's a very, uh, how to say, difficult uh, thing. Easy to say uh, that you need to have out of the box thinking and do it all the time and, and do new things and leave old things behind and so on. But uh, when we are uh, in the new situation with the experience that so far everything was a kind of uh, previous year based on kind of thinking, uh, so it was not out of the box at all, I would say, except ob obviously innovative uh, startups or innovations and, and um, uh, situations like that. But the day-to-day -day business, the business as, as usual, is very, very far from that. So I think we, we demand a lot uh, from decision makers uh, asking they should think out of, out of the box. And uh, I personally believe that um, sometimes, according to this lean uh, startup logic, uh, you need to make smaller steps and get reactions and uh, change your plan if you need to, instead of develop, develop, developing something completely new, left everything behind, uh, because that might be just, just too risky. I don't say sometimes it's not a great idea if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's an innovative situation uh, and you can afford having lots of people focusing just on that. But if you are in business, uh, you have your day-to-day -day operation, you have to deliver results because you are responsible for people. Uh, I think there are great methodologies to, to use uh, for achieving better results with uh, lower risk. And I will speak about them obviously a little bit later. So one, one of these uh, methodology is what I just learned uh, last year from uh, George Cabo Bird, uh, who is a strategic consultant um, with a methodology called Slingshot. He's one of our members. 
Um, and uh, I didn't mention it yet that we uh, have regular meetups um, on media space for our members and uh, we invite um, different members in different topics and, uh, and we invited Gabor uh, because uh, he started a kind of communication to have the industry and not just the media and the advertising industry but but others as well how to turn crisis into opportunity so what he says basically and i think this is all about uh, creativity in difficult times uh, that view the current crisis as a form of extreme disruption uh, embrace perpetual crisis mindset so it's very important that that he believes there is a mindset required these days. Uh, and we have to understand that this, the disru disruption is constant from now on. And, and that's how it links to creativity. Harness creativity as your organization's critical resource for finding new opportunities during and after this crisis. I think that's one of the, the key points that helped me a lot about uh, thinking how we are impacted by the pandemic um, and uh, how we could do uh, better, more impactful um, advices uh, for everyone who is around us in a business sense. So reaching to the third point, business creativity and innovation in the media and advertising space. Uh, obviously, I can't say too much new uh, to the audience, uh, so let me just summarize uh, how we see uh, what we face with. Obviously, there is the COVID crisis in terms of economic ter terms, um, in terms of, uh, obviously, the workspace terms and so on, and there is a recovery uh, that can be seen in a few countries. Uh, we don't see how much it is a real recovery for the media and the industry, uh, advertising industry uh, as uh, our analysis uh, that we do on a few big uh, traditional media companies and online platforms that are on the stock exchange. Uh, we found that this is a K-shaped recovery, which means that there are uh, companies that are getting extremely bigger in terms of their audience and revenue and uh, and some of especially the traditional media companies uh, lose their market shares and opportunities to recover so that is this economic angle uh, in the industry uh, obviously we have to face this so-called cookie apocalypse uh, which is the uh, demise of the third party cookies that's going to happen uh, next year probably, uh, for privacy reasons. And obviously it started in the European market with the GDPR and then came uh, some American uh, new laws, reg registration, sorry, regulations. Um, but there are other parts of the world that are uh, catching up or uh, trying to have similar uh, privacy first type of uh, regulations, which, are, which is a good thing. Uh, but these days, uh, I think this is something which, is, which could be a challenge on its own uh, for the global industry. Uh, on the other hand, it's not an industry problem as well, because it touches every consumer, every citizen uh, that um, is available uh, on the internet. Uh, so this is much more than that. Uh, but this uh, topic is not the, the main topic today. What I, I would like to highlight is that this cookie problem is something uh, that is global and that has to be solved uh, on every level, business uh, or organization level and the industry level as well. The third big challenge, uh, as we see, is the upcoming or ongoing regulatory storm. Uh, I come from Europe, so I can see it more uh, that it's already happening, uh, regulating the online platforms, figuring out how to make a fair competition between traditional media companies and the online platforms. Uh, the GDPR is already here, uh, and uh, 
the e-commerce questions are also related to the media space. So uh, this is a very, very complex problem on its own as well. And last but not least, uh, the digital transformation challenge that has been with us uh, before the pandemic. And uh, I think it's going to be the main topic for the upcoming uh, decades, uh, not only for the media industry, but basically uh, for everyone. We have to count with the general pandemic challenges, uh, which is, I already mentioned, the uh, disruption of the physical business to business networking and collaboration uh, systems, how we sell and buy in the advertising and media space, uh, which is broken. But at the same time, uh, as I mentioned, we believe that this is limited anyway. So uh, the good thing uh, in all this is that uh, going digital and going global provides new opportunities. We just need to learn how, how to do that. And I think we are learning together with this conference and uh, with uh, many other um, organizations in this industry. And uh, regarding creativity, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I want to focus on the business angle. Uh, we we can see that basically everything is changing and all the big problems that I mentioned, plus uh, the company level, organization level challenges require new kind of solutions, new thinking. And obviously that requires creativity. Uh, starting with the most creative ones, uh, the innovative startups, uh, obviously this privacy challenge, um, made uh, lots of ad tech uh, company live uh, and, uh, and thrive because we need these new solutions uh, to replace the third party cookies to make the whole uh, internet more uh, privacy uh, first for the consumers and businesses as well. So obviously that's a, that's a, how to say, business as usual way because innovative startups are innovating anyway that requires new kind of thinking, new approaches and new uh, methodologies uh, to achieve new kind of uh, results, not necessarily technically, but strategically and uh, in terms of business solutions as well. Um, so that's obviously something we, we already had. Uh, on the other hand, uh, where we need even more creativity and, uh, and good solutions, is the brand side. Uh, my personal experience is that brands were more conservative. Uh, they were um, enjoying the status quo until they could. Uh, obviously, there are always innovative brands who are ahead of the market and so on. I speak about the majority of brands. And um, some of them started some kind of transformation, um, looking at new opportunities, uh, what the digital solutions can bring or cross-media solutions or innovative digital billboard campaigns and so on. But it was quite slow, uh, in my opinion. And uh, the COVID pandemic has uh, just shake uh, lots of company up in a way that uh, those who are in a good situation uh, because they are the winners uh, of this, uh, can obviously afford being more brave. Uh, on the other hand, who lost many resources, revenues, uh, they have to be smarter. So that's what makes them uh, maybe a little bit more open uh, to new things. On the other hand, making the whole work process uh, in the media and marketing uh, work more effective, faster, more precise, more optimized, uh, that's everything that is more required now than ever, which means that everyone has to have a more open mind and, uh, and let more creative solutions in. In terms of the media companies, uh, basically everything is um, moving because uh, we know there are cross-media measurement uh, processes um, already started. Um, actually two years ago, and that uh, they will basically recreate the whole uh, 
media, audience measurement, campaign planning, uh, monitoring, post-buying system, if they uh, will be born uh, one day. Uh, there are very um, concrete plans uh, in the United States and United Kingdom and uh, all over Europe. I'm not so familiar with the, uh, with the other markets, uh, but I believe that this is happening everywhere. So that's something which also uh, just not the business as usual way. And uh, why it's speeding up is, I believe, because the pandemic just uh, brought big brands, marketers to the point that it's very important to have more optimal campaigns because they can save money, re-optimize the budget. Uh, so basically, this is the, the, the main motivation, which was in the air for, for years now. And last but not least, I believe regulators need new solutions as well. Just to mention the fake news uh, war uh, that started with the COVID pandemic, uh, regulators finally understood that it's not just an industry problem, that the media and the advertising industry needs solutions, but this is everyone's um, interest uh, to have um, fair uh, competition, uh, right? Uh, obviously, that's a, that's a very difficult question, what is fake and what is not, but, but at least uh, trying to avoid misinformation and disinformation. Uh, obviously, the whole digital government issues uh, is on agenda as well, since COVID even more. Uh, but uh, just speaking about our industry, I think this fake news issues, misinformation, disinformation, uh, and the online platform competition are those two main uh, challenges that the regulators have to deal with. And speaking of creativity and innovation, obviously there are very different regulators all around the world with different approaches, uh, but there are some very innovative ones like the UK uh, Competition Markets Authority. They collected a lot of information went into the details, uh, they have their own uh, methodologies, how to mine uh, valuable information from huge amount of data. Uh, so I believe that there are some very, very good examples how regulators can be creative. And uh, obviously they don't have, no one has unlimited resources. So uh, they can have uh, some new ways how to, how to do their job. And that also uh, implies that creativity has to play a huge role in, in it as well. I would like to mention a very interesting story uh, that I read somewhere. Um, this was about uh, an analysis that um, a professor uh, did about the automobile industry uh, and uh, there was a, a huge amount of companies uh, who didn't survive um, after the, the Ford uh, innovation was born. And uh, what this uh, analysis showed was uh, that uh, there were 13,000 companies who simply didn't understand that the automobile would be the future. So um, what the conclusion is uh, here that, uh, or at least the, uh, what the author said, uh, that these companies had seen the automobile, but they didn't want to believe this was the future. So they thought it was a novelty. Uh, it was just reserved for the elite uh, of the society um, and so on. And basically, they just couldn't um, keep, uh, now I'm gonna stop and restart again this sentence. Uh, so these companies, this huge amount of uh, companies just simply didn't understand what the future should be and they simply refused uh, to see what's uh, in front of them. And uh, this made us think, uh, because this is all about thinking our approaches um, 
accepting new things, accepting creativity that is just unbelievable uh, for our current state of mind. And uh, I was just thinking what, what's the obvious that we as an industry or we as companies or our company just doesn't want to see. And uh, I found a very, very good uh, example. Probably there is a lot uh, that we should face with. Uh, but what I believe is what we refuse the most uh, and we shouldn't is the, the digital transformation. So I love this cartoon uh, because this is creative. So in one sentence and one, one picture, it just has the whole story. Um, so as you can see, uh, this is a meeting room and someone says, we need to rethink our strategy of hoping the internet will just go away. So I think this is, I actually, I recognize ourselves a bit as well. And I believe uh, most of companies would, uh, because just to give you an example, why I believe this is true for everyone that we underestimate the opportunities in the uh, digital uh, is that we, as I mentioned, uh, decided to uh, develop a social platform, media space, uh, last January, so it was before the pandemic, uh, we had the strategy how we'd, we would uh, launch it and how we would um, invite people and so on. And despite we created a digital platform that we launched in May, and obviously that was already in the pandemic era, but in January, February, March not, but uh, in the first two months, uh, I visited people in London, in Budapest, uh, explained them what we do, invited to the platform. So all of our, or my, um, how to say, first steps were absolutely physical and non-digital. And uh, the pandemic changed this as well, obviously. And uh, the upside of this change is that we can make calls with everyone. And these days I don't have to go to Paris, to London, to New York, to Dhaka uh, anymore because we can have these um, kind of communications because this is accepted by everyone. And that's what is also, obviously this is not about creativity, uh, but uh, status and traditions and habits and everything. Um, but, uh, but I think coming back to the original topic of creativity, it's very important sometimes and very hard to imagine about something that, that has such a huge uh, role in our life. And, uh, and I think this is what, uh, what we are doing with the, with the digital transformation, not uh, benefiting as much as we could uh, from it. So going back to the methodological question, uh, as I mentioned, there are uh, quite a few, you are probably aware of a few of them. Uh, what I like about the slingshot framework of George Gabor Bird uh, is uh, that it's very, very pragmatic. They, or he calls it the innovation shortcut, uh, which means that, uh, and I think it's easier if I just read it out, uh, that you should adopt a process to systematically fo focus your creative thinking on what customers need and want the most. So that's the, uh, that's the starting point uh, for the slingshot framework. Um, and uh, what he also points out is that uh, we should use this process to identify new market opportunities while minimizing resources, cutting costs, and keeping your staff engaged and motivated. I think every single word of it has a huge importance. So one is new market opportunities, which are very close to us and minimizing resources. This is just like written for the pandemic situation, I think. Um, also the human side is very important because if your um, colleagues, staff is not engaged enough and not motivated enough, uh, they will not think about new solutions and creative uh, thinking can't be expected from them. So I think this all requires a kind of collaborative, uh, positive 
uh, working place environment. Um, and he also suggests uh, to take advantage of the crisis uh, to strengthen your customer relationships, community outreach, and to revitalize your company's value proposition. Uh, this customer relationship uh, angle is also something very uh, underdone uh, and undervalued, I think. Uh, just to give you an example uh, of uh, Gaber, uh, he brought us, uh, we had a, a discussion, online discussion with them, with him. And uh, he said uh, that, for example, he loves Starbucks, but he hates the, the top of the cup because that's, that's just useless. Uh, and not very environment uh, protective. So what he said that he would suggest them to start some kind of innovation with that because that's already there. People go to uh, Starbucks. Starbucks has a good image, a good reputation. Um, so why not starting with something that makes our customers uh, happier, more engaged, uh, and obviously that comes out of the knowledge uh, that we know what their pain points are. So this customer relationship uh, angle. So as George Gabor uh, Bird suggests, uh, or there are other innovation creativity methods obviously as well, uh, that we can use some very simple methodologies how to get uh, through problems and uh, create quick solutions. So one of them is to adopt the process uh, to systematically focus uh, your creative thinking on what customers need, uh, customers need and want the most. Uh, obviously, that's that's something which we should do all the time, uh, but we have to remind ourselves to do that. On the other hand, uh, he suggests uh, to identify new market opportunities uh, while minimizing resources, cutting costs, and keeping your staff engaged and motivated. I think it's also very important uh, that only motivated people will be creative uh, and take advantage of the crisis to strengthen your customer relationships, community outreach, and revitalize your company's value proposition. Okay, I'm trying to move on. Yes, yeah, so just a few words, last words about our uh, answer uh, to the current situation. So originally we wanted to facilitate more conversation uh, among very different uh, angles, professions within the media marketing technology and regulatory sector. Um, and uh, obviously now it's a little bit more because we are more uh, on digital. Uh, we created events based on what our members uh, required, uh, trying to follow what uh, George Gabor suggests um, and that's true for all uh, these functions on media space. Uh, and uh, also this get introductions uh, matchmaking feature that we are testing uh, was coming from one of our leadership board members uh, who said that uh, he has limited time and the opportunity to meet people randomly. Uh, and uh, he would be very happy to have some kind of um, digital space to, to meet new people. So that's how it all started. Um, and uh, we already have quite a few people who, who tested and, and tried. So it, it seems that uh, we are managing to uh, answer uh, demands on the market. Uh, what we also believe, and that's why I'm very happy to be here today, uh, is that the professional communities and their knowledge sharing is very powerful. And uh, we don't just speak about innovation, uh, but uh, we have uh, members who are at Tech Martech uh, innovators themselves. And um, obviously, this is a free uh, platform with premium memberships, so everyone can. Um, upload their companies uh, to showcase in the uh, Innovation Expo. Uh, so that's how we try to, to have the industry and the individual companies to uh, meet each other. Um, we 
uh, like using uh, our members' innovation as well. Uh, and uh, this is, for example, one of them. Uh, this is a Vialog uh, engagement software that we uh, use. And uh, I'm very proud that uh, we can integrate solutions uh, from our members among the very first ones. Uh, obviously, it, it is a win-win for everyone. And, um, and that's what I believe uh, professional community globally can benefit from that you can have new ideas, new solutions, new solutions, creative uh, solutions that you wouldn't meet uh, otherwise. So as a summary, uh, we have limited resources uh, in the media and advertising business while facing global industry and local business challenges. So creativity in business and business operations and all areas of the media and advertising space is crucial. Thank you so much for your listening. Thank you, Ms. Kinga, for your insightful session.